Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to preview the match this Saturday that will be against Houston Dynamo 2. The match will take place at Ralph Court Stadium in Edwardsville. For today's press conference, we're joined by City 2 head coach John Hackworth. Please notify us in the chat if you have any questions, and then we'll call on you. And we'll get started with the first question from Tom Timmerman. Good morning, John. Good morning, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Though um, I'm I'm a bachelor right now. My my wife and daughter have left town, so I'm I'm here alone. All right. Just me and the dog. Not that you needed to know that. Hey, um, it's you got a busy week coming up, starting with Saturday. Then you have midweek games next week. You've done this before. How does this approach? Uh, how do you approach this game and the upcoming games with three games in was it eight days? Yeah, we're focused on this first game versus Houston, and then trying to reflect and evaluate, you know, the changes that we'll need to make uh, for Wednesday in Colorado. Um, that's a tough, you know, uh, second game of the week at altitude. Um, you know, travel altitude. And then, unfortunately, we travel and, and head straight to Chicago. So it's going to be a challenging week, but because we have good depth on our roster and um, feel like players are well prepared, you know, that's what we need to, to rely on and trust. And then we will rotate uh, the rosters that we see fit going forward. I, and we talked about this a little after the game the other day, but as you now starting to how are you deciding young guys to get in the lineup to the developmental process of this team? How, how are you approaching that on getting the younger guys in? Well, first, the, the most fundamental thing is how they train, you know, and we want players to perform in training and that gives them an opportunity to be selected. Um, at the same time, it's a discussion with our staff. Uh, and we feel very strongly that you have to provide opportunities to young players sometimes because that's how they develop. And that's what this program is about. Everything below our first team should be um, to develop players, you know, ultimately for the first team. And if you uh, like with our roster, it would be easy uh, to look at, uh, look at a kid like Aaron and say, OK, you know, he's younger, he's got a ton of time, uh, but we always know that we have to provide them opportunities to play. And that process of selecting them, uh, to your question specifically, uh, it's not as much science as it is, you know, uh, a lot of discussion between our staff and then trying to look at the data that we have and say, what's right for this player at this specific time? What, how can we integrate them into our team how can we give them a chance to be as successful as possible? Um, that's all, uh, you know, a tricky balance, um, but one that we are, you know, excited about because we feel like we have some some wonderful, young, talented players. I guess you want to also be careful not to put like a whole bunch in at once. You talk about with Aaron, there was a, a chance to succeed and you don't want to just put three or four young guys out there at once because of it could be complicated. Yeah, and look, we if you go back, look at the Minnesota game where we gave a lot of guys a young, you know, it was a very young team that we put out there. And in reflection with the with the experienced players that Minnesota brought, which is a challenge in this league and will definitely be a challenge in, in the next three games. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. But my, my point is sometimes you just don't know who you're playing against uh, in this particular league. Um, you could be getting a lot of first team players. For example, this is a FIFA break. The U.S. national team played last night. Um, and congratulations to them. Great performance over uh, Morocco. But that means that there's no MLS games. And so MLS clubs like Houston and Colorado and Chicago, maybe they want to get their first team players minutes. Um, so we don't know really who we're going to see in these next three games. And we need to be mindful of that in our decision making to play some of our younger guys if we see if we think that they're you know in good form and deserve the opportunity. Um, is, yeah, is there any when do you find out who like Houston would have? Will you not know until an hour before the game? 
No, the, 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 you have to submit a, a roster um, for eligible players, uh, but it's a 35 man roster. So it's very <laughs> broad yeah. and it doesn't, you know, uh, cl- each club has done it differently. Um, but that does, you know, allow them to essentially list both the first team and second team rosters effectively. Mm-hmm. Uh, and since I'm on a roll, just, what do you, Houston, obviously they're the best team in the league, at least record wise. What, what have you seen in them? Yeah, I think we're going to get, this will be the, the second opponent we faced that um, one is playing at a really high level right now. Um, Houston, as you mentioned, is the best team in the league record wise. I think they deserve that um, based on their performances. So it's going to be a great challenge for us, uh, one we are looking forward to. Um, Like San Jose, we know we're going to get a quality opponent. And uh, there's a lot at stake, you know, in terms of of the standing. So uh, we hope we can build off that second half against San Jose and and put out one of our best performances of the year against Houston. I'm going to keep going until someone tells me to stop. Um, So if you need me to stop, stop me. Um, how have you felt about the the back line on this team? Obviously, it's 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 been I think pretty much constant throughout. How how is that group working? Yeah, I mean that's the that is certainly the core of our team. And when you have uh, players like Josh Yarrow and Kyle Hebert, um, it really gives you you know a solid foundation to to operate on it. And particularly the way that we play and the way that we are pressing, how high we are up the field. Uh, those two players in particular do such a wonderful job um, and, and continue to do that. So that is kind of the, the foundation um, for our team right now. It's not to say that other guys haven't been uh, solid, but those two in particular um, give us a lot of quality and, and leadership going forward. Um, back across the river to Southern Illinois, any lessons learned from, uh, from a game on the turf uh, there last time out? Um, just that it's a wonderful, you know, venue and our, our fans were fantastic. You know, um, they certainly gave us a boost against Portland and hopefully, um, it'll be fun to play on a Saturday night, uh, on the East side this time. And, uh, hopefully we can have the same support from our fans and, and deliver another performance, uh, like we did against Portland. Everybody who's been, who's been healthy, still healthy. Let me think, is there anybody? Yes, the answer is yes. We are basically fully healthy with with all the players that, um, you know, we we have a couple guys that are out long-term, but everybody uh, that is available and has been available uh, for the most part is ready. Presume, are you, you leave Tuesday for the, to start the road trip? Correct. So uh, this this is gonna be just gonna be some, some really quick turnarounds here too, right? Yeah, and look, we've uh, we've recently hired a, a director of high performance, um, and that helps us so much um, because uh, it just is that now we have an expert in terms of the, the regen process, the recovery process, and the preparation, uh, especially in the physical periodization and nutrition and, and all the the things that that he is doing for us. So we're we're super excited about that, and that should help us. Uh, the goal, obviously, is to, you know, perform at a high level, recover, uh, and then do the same thing. And when you're uh, faced with the challenge of playing three games in a week, uh, that certainly is going to test our, our depth um, and our processes of how we go about doing that with our players. Thanks, John. I'll pass the baton. All right. Our next question is for Kiros Louder. Kiros, go ahead and ask your question. Great. Thank you. Yes, uh, this is Karis Louder. I'm going to be doing the uh, play-by-play for our broadcast on Saturday. And just kind of a uh, more of a philosophy question for you. You talked a bit about the uh, bringing in young players and developing them, uh, obviously, as the, as the club progresses towards MLS at the senior level next year. How much going into these matches, especially as you have these three matches in a week, and just in general over the season, are you balancing building a squad that can go out and beat a certain team versus building a system that players can fit into 
um, where do you kind of match your short-term versus long-term goals on a, on a game-to-game -game basis? Um, I think we start with the process of how do we want to play? Uh, what's our game model? And, you know, from day one, Lutz was very specific about um, our style of play and our principles. Um, you know, I get here to the club and I know very clearly uh, what those principles are. And then Bradley arrives and, and understands, you know, there's, uh, so that I think is the start of it, is that we are bullish in terms of the, our style and the way we want to play. And that, therefore, that dictates the players that we have selected. Um, and in the case of our team right now, you know, we're, we're, this is, whether they're young players, whether they're players, you know, that are first time pros, we have a lot of those players, you know, it's about development uh, first and foremost. However, uh, the balance that you're questioning or speaking of is really important because we are, you know, we are all competitive and we know that learning how to play a style and learning how to win is really important to development. So they all have to come uh, together at some point. And then comes the selection process. You know, who do you put on the field to give yourself the best chance to continue to build on the style of play that you want this club to be known for? And at the same time, providing opportunities for a, a variety of players. And that's where we feel good about our group. You know, we feel like we have a, a team. We're, we're, I think Rochester is the only other team in MLS Next Pro that is a true team. You know, the other clubs, the players are coming in and out. Uh, they do it different ways. Um, our opponent this weekend, Houston, seems to have a core group of guys that they have played consistently. Uh, so maybe we're going to see another team. But again, they have the opportunity to play uh, some first team players and, and they clearly have already. Um, so it's an interesting balance overall. But I would say, you know, make sure that we play by our principles. Number one, we've selected players specifically to do that. And we have a lot of young guys that we feel have the potential to, you know, grow and develop and uh, play next year for the first team. That's great. Um just one more for me. You talked a little bit about the fans at uh, at both of these uh, these home fields that you've played at. St. Louis, like you said, being the only team not having that um, that senior team that's playing every single week, um, kind of like Rochester. What what has been the most surprising part about the fan base already? Uh, you know, a lot of these teams have come into the league and sort of not had the chance to have the buildup that, that St. Louis has uh, the opportunity this year with uh, MLS Next Pro. Has, that, has the reception been surprising to you? Has it been, um, what's been your experience with the fan base there in, in St. Louis? Well, it's been fantastic, but it hasn't been a surprise. I mean, this is a, a soccer crazy town. Um, historically, uh, and when I speak to people outside of St. Louis, I try to explain that like this community uh, has always been so passionate about this sport. And it's, you know, for, for me personally, but for our players um, to see our fans and the passion that they bring, uh, you know, I, you can look at all these other games, uh, you know, in our league right now. And the thing that stands out to me is that you see it and you hear it. Uh, and, and that's been wonderful for us as we build this club, because we know that we're in this together, you know, we're building our, our pro team for the first time and we have a passionate group of fans. Um, you know, we've, I don't know where our season ticket, uh, you know, situation is for the first team next year, but I think it's pretty demanding. Um, and a lot of people are saying we could have built a much bigger stadium, uh, but that's just indicative of this community and what soccer means to it, um, both now and hopefully in the future. Thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you very much. All right. And we'll go ahead and close out there for today. Um...
the match will be this Saturday against Houston Dynamo 2 and streamed live on MLSMaxPro.com. Thanks.